Dear students, in the chapter of photosynthesis, in the last session we discussed about light harvesting complex that is LHC and we know in this complex we have two main systems the photo system 1 PS1 and photo system 2 the PS2 and also we discussed then photo system 2 we have one reaction center which receives the light. From this point we move forward. We begin our discussion with electron transport. Let us understand how it is happening. We know then PS2 the photo system 2 we have a reaction center which has capacity to receive the red light. The wavelength is such that it can receive the red light and will produce the electrons. They will move from PS2 to PS1 and we can also call it uphill. After that it will come downhill and it will convert NADP into NADPH and H. Hence electrons are produced. This is how the electrons are moving which becomes very important for photosynthesis. Let us now understand this through the slide. We have electron acceptor, we have electron transport system, we have cytochromes, electron moving downhill and electron moving uphill and this is all happening because of oxidation reduction reactions. Now when all this is happening which you can see in the slide it is making a Z shape. Sometimes it is also called Z reaction or Z cycle. In the diagram you can easily see how the light wavelength is trapped by reaction center which is in photosystem 2 and how uphill task begins and they reach up to PS1 and then downhill task begins and NADP is converted into NADPH and H and this is the electron system, the electron transport happening in our PS2 and PS1. The light harvesting system or the light harvesting complex plays the crucial role in making it possible. Children, you may be wondering why I should discuss splitting of water suddenly. What is the correlation? I of course told you about photosystem 2, photosystem 1 and the reaction center. We also know that reaction center has pigments and it receives light and produces electrons. And those electrons are moving from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 and moves on for further reactions that is the electron transport we know it. Now the question is how long the electrons will be produced in the reaction center? It may be exhausted at one point of time then how this electron transport system will go on? The answer is a splitting of water. Because of splitting of water the electron is produced because the water you know H2O it will split into hydrogen, oxygen and electrons. These are the electrons which are made available to PS2, the photosystem 2 continuously and hence our electron transport system goes on. One more point which is coming out of splitting of water is and which you should note that the oxygen which is released from the plant during photosynthesis is coming from water not from carbon dioxide. Plant takes carbon dioxide in photosynthesis and gives out oxygen which is very important fact. But the oxygen which is released is not from CO2 carbon dioxide but it is from H2O the water. So oxygen released the gas for life for our respiration is coming due to splitting of water. So you can understand how important the splitting of water is. It is not only providing oxygen to be released, it is also providing 
electrons so that the system of photosynthesis and other systems continue in the plant. We can also see this in our slide. You can see 2 H2O will give 4 hydrogen, oxygen and 4 electrons. And this system, the splitting of water system is associated with PS2. Why PS2? Because PS2 has the reaction center and electrons are produced initially there. So, it should be associated at that point. It is in thylakoid. You know the position of chlorophyll and the thylakoid and helps in phosphorylation that is conversion of ADP to ATP. ATP is the source of energy and this is happening in mitochondria and of course in chloroplast. So, this is about splitting of water and now we move forward chemoosmotic hypothesis what it is about and how it works. We know that the final aim is to produce ATP and of course oxygen. Let us now discuss and study in this slide how this is taking place and then I explain further. This is happening in thylakoid. So, thylakoid membrane is involved, proton pump is involved, proton gradient is involved and of course enzyme ATPase is involved which will convert ADP to ATP. Now, this membrane is important and many things are happening inside and outside the membrane. You can see photosystem 2 here. You can see photosystem 1 also in between cytochrome. You are also seeing the electrons H plus. Now, they are moving from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 which you can see in this diagram and finally, ATP synthetase is helping ADP to be converted to ATP. Naturally, the electrons are used and they are produced again by splitting of water. Now, in this case, the proton pump is producing protons which are making proton gradient. This proton gradient is an important aspect. Only when this gradient breaks, then ATP is produced and breaking will take place as the electrons are going on being produced and then ADP is converted to ATP. So, this is chemoosmotic hypothesis which explains majorly the proton pump and the proton gradient and breaking of gradient for the purpose for which we are doing all this discussion. We have understood about proton gradient of chemoosmotic hypothesis that only when this gradient breaks then the purpose is served and this gradient will break due to movement of electrons across the membrane. Now, we will see that what is happening in dark reaction. We have already discussed light reaction in previous episodes. We know about ATP and NADPH. These are the products of light reaction. Please remember the production of ATP and production of NADPH, these are product of light reaction. Now, we move forward with this. It will result into synthesis of food, also release of oxygen, we know the details and this is a biosynthetic pathway. Now, this biosynthetic pathway we are calling dark reaction. Why? Because it is taking place in absence of light inside the thylakoid, inside the leaf. But it is not very correct to call it dark reaction because it is taking place in the presence of product of light reaction. Please remember ATP and NADPH are product of light reaction that could not happen if light was not there. If sunlight was not available, ATP and NADPH could not be produced. And now this biosynthetic pathway or dark reaction could not take place if ATP and NADPH is not present. That means, dark reaction is dependent on products of light reaction. Hence, we can say that light is equally responsible and important for dark reaction to take place. Hey students, we have discussed and understood many parts of photosynthesis. Now, let us see what are the factors that affect photosynthesis. By now, you know 
that photosynthesis is an important phenomenon and life cannot exist on earth without this process going on and with that you also know the value of plants around us. You very well know we need sunlight for photosynthesis. So first factor has to be light. We already know that another important factor for photosynthesis has to be carbon dioxide and then comes water because carbon dioxide and water in presence of sunlight will carry on photosynthesis and produce food plus oxygen. In addition to these three, temperature is another factor. Suppose the plant is in a frozen condition or suppose it is boiling, then naturally photosynthesis will not take place. So optimum temperature is also the need for photosynthesis. So we can also include temperature in the factors which may affect photosynthesis. We will discuss about low limiting factor and also factor at sub-optimal level. Now first let us start with the light. We know photosynthesis takes place during the day and it does not take place during the night because of absence of sun. That means light is important. In your class, in your laboratory, your teachers have helped you in understanding how in absence of light the leaf will not undergo photosynthesis. So we can say that light is an important factor. If carbon dioxide is not made available experimentally to the leaf, then also photosynthesis will not occur and that means carbon dioxide is also important and we are very pleased to know this because we are producing lot of carbon dioxide and we want oxygen in exchange and our plant friends are doing that for us. Water which is again a basic need for plant and also for the photosynthesis. Now when I talk of law of limiting factor, what do I mean by this? I mean that if photosynthesis is not taking place in a plant, then either one factor is important which is not working well, one factor may be responsible for this or suppose two, three factors are responsible, two, three factors are affected at the same time, then law of limiting factor says that the photosynthesis will be affected by that factor which is at the minimal level. So out of two or three, the one which is at the minimal or sub-minimal level will eventually affect the photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is definitely affected by so many factors and if everything is okay, plant continues with photosynthesis production of food and production of oxygen. At this point, I will remind you that this is photosynthesis We have plants are taking carbon dioxide, giving out oxygen, but they are doing respiration also in which they also take oxygen like us and they also give out carbon dioxide like us. In this session, we have discussed about electron transport system, splitting of water, oxygen coming out from water which is released by the plant. Also we have discussed chemo-osmotic hypothesis and the dark reaction for which the product of light reactions are important and then we also discussed the factors affecting photosynthesis like water, like carbon dioxide, like light and law of limiting factor. With this we come to the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you.